Hello there, welcome to Craft with V, and welcome to our first tutorial for week three of our Tilda Stitch Along. This week we're going to be using the free pattern that has just been released, which has been released um, for the Bon Voyage fabric range. It's for a beautiful little diamond pin cushion. Now I'm going to um, instruct you on how to make this using a paper that you leave in your pin cushion, but I will also step you along to do the English paper piecing version where you use cardboard templates. But I'm going to be using this applique paper. It's produced by a local company here to me, Hugs and Kisses, but you can buy it online. Their website is www.hugsandkisses.net, which is up here. So what you're looking for is applique paper, and this paper is designed to use in needle turn applique or English paper piecing. It's a fusible, a single-sided fusible paper that's semi-transparent for tracing, and it's also water-soluble. So what that means is that you can actually um, leave this paper in your work, and it will soften over time. But also, if it's something that you're making that you're going to wash, like a quilt, it will also dissolve, start to dissolve as you use it. But it is much easier, I find, to use this also for English paper piecing because you don't have to fiddle around with taking out the pieces. So it is just um, a very thin piece of paper, but it has a right and a wrong side. You might be able to see the glue there very slightly. You can see that shine. That's the glue side. But I'm going to take you over to the printer and show you how easy this stuff is to use. Okay, so you need to come along to your printer and you need to get your sheet of applique paper and pop it into your printer tray. Just to be careful I don't knock the camera over here. So we're going to pop this into the printer tray. It's making it a little bit difficult with the camera there, but anyway, that's okay. And you may need to adjust the area on your printer because this is slightly wider than A4 paper just slightly okay right now what we're going to do is we're going to take the pattern sheet so this is the pattern sheet from the pattern the last page we're going to pop it underneath the scanning area on our printer now of course you could print straight from the pattern and just print page four if you wish. And then we're going to use the copy feature and then we're just going to press start. And there we have our sheet printed. Okay, so there we have it, all printed onto the piece of applique paper. Now, of course, if you're going to be using just ordinary um, cardboard in your shapes and you're going to remove them, you can do the exact same thing, print straight onto the cardboard and then just cut them out. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut these out and then we'll get to um, making the little shapes. Okay, so now that you've cut out your shapes, you should have four of this shape and four of this shape here. So then we're going to choose which fabrics we're going to use and for the purpose of the video I'm going to be using this floral one here for my top and you can see here that I have placed the diamonds in exactly the same spot on the pattern. Because I'm using the fusible iron-on ones I just simply um, pop it into the same spot on the pattern and then I just take it to the ironing board and fuse it down. If you're actually going to be sewing yours, you might want to make a pencil mark so that you can see exactly where you're going to be placing your piece of card. So then what you need to do is you need to cut out leaving a seam allowance on the external parts of the shape. So just like this. Just put that out of the way. Now I'm going to be using some glue on mine and by the looks of this I need to change my glue stick. 
not very good planning. There we go. Easy done. Okay, so if you're using this paper the same as I am, or even if you're going to be using cardboard, you can still do the glue method, or you can just use a needle and thread and do the tacking method. But what you need to do is to just glue down the edges of your shape, like so. And you need to repeat this for all four, and as I said, if you can put your shapes onto a pattern repeat, that will give you um, a more polished, finished product. So then we just do that. And then we're going to do the same thing with our other shape, and I'll just grab that. So for this one, I'm using this pink fabric here, and I've put it on a pattern repeat. So the same thing applies, we're just going to cut it out with around about a quarter of an inch around the outside, just like that. And the same thing, we're just going to fold it over. So this shape here actually forms the base, you can see here that the word base is written. This is going to form the base of your pin cushion. Now you don't worry about these little pieces here hanging over because they're going to get tucked into your seams anyway. So don't worry about that. There we go. Okay, so now you need to follow your pattern just get my sheet up here and you need to join so we've just done this bit here so you need to join all of your pieces so that your end piece is going to look like this so what you're doing to begin with is you're going to join one diamond to the next diamond and then another diamond and then another diamond and you can see here on the pattern sheet how the pattern is joined that's because we have what they've called fussy cut and then we're going to put the outside pieces in like so. Now I have gone ahead and actually done another one here just so that I could jump ahead and show you what to do. So you can see here that I've sewn the four diamonds together and by doing that I've caused a new pattern to start off in the centre there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join it as per the pattern. So that will give you the top of your pin cushion there. And then we're going to fold down all of these base pieces here. I should have brought some clips over with me to clip it and show you. So that's your first three there that will form your base. And then we'll pop in this last one. And you need to leave a turning section in one of them before you stitch them all together. So what we're going to do, as per the pattern sheet, is we're going to join them all. You can see there. And here in the base, they have left, oops, they have left a gap. So it's just there. So I can just turn that up again for you. So we're going to join that part of the base. Then we'll join that part of the base. Oops. See if I can hold all three. Then we're going to put that piece in there as well and stitch it all in and stitch down through there. And then we'll turn it in the right way. And then we'll stuff it. Okay, so once you've formed the shape of the pyramid at the top here and you've sewn in your last diamond, then you'll see that there's a fold line on the bottom of this shape here. Use your iron and just make a nice crisp fold and then that will allow you to be able to sew the bottom properly. Now don't forget that you've got to leave um, an area there for turning. So sew them all together except for one where you need to leave a gap. So if you are not familiar with English paper piecing, I thought I'd just come on and show you how to stitch shapes together, just in case you aren't aware of how to do that, um, and show you which thread I use. I use one from Superior Threads called the Bottom Line. 
it's um, 100% polyester thread and I use it doubled um, but you can use any strong white thread and what you need to do is to thread your needle doubled and then pop a knot in the end then you need to take two of your shapes that you want to sew together and in my case this time just for the purpose of this I'm going to be stitching together two hexagons that I've fussy cut so then what you need to do is just to line up the edge of the two pieces on the piece that you want to sew together and then you're going to run your needle up into the seam underneath there so if you can see that I've got it going up underneath that fabric but coming out at the corner there and that purpose of that is to hide your knot so you can see that my knot has gone up into that hopefully you can see that it's gone up into that seam and then what we're going to do is we're going to pop the needle through both pieces of fabric and just picking up a tiny bit of fabric from both and the reason we're doing that is we don't want to have our stitches showing too much on the other side I'm finding it's very difficult to do on camera when I can't have my face really close to it so anyway I probably will pick up too much fabric here but you can see what I've done there I've gone from one side to the other and you're effectively just doing a whip stitch so you just keep going backwards and forwards all the way along your shape and then that will give you a beautiful whip so if I open that up now you can see that part there that I have stitched and you can just see my little stitches there and that's mostly because I couldn't see what I was doing now the other little trick I wanted to show you is a locking stitch it's called a figure of eight stitch or some people call it a knicker knot so what you're going to do is you're going to pop your needle in through both sides then you've got your thread hopefully you can see these two pieces of thread here then you are going to take the thread from the left hand side and you're going to wrap it around the right hand side of the needle hold it take the other side and wrap it around in the opposite direction so you're effectively doing a figure eight and then you're just going to pull that tight and you should be able to see there what that's doing that is forming a knot and there we have hopefully you can see that you can see there that that's formed a knot so that effectively locks that stitching and you, you can't um, undo it, which means that your English paper pieces won't unravel. And then you can just continue on. Now I like to do it a couple of times along the edge of a shape, just in case for some reason the stitching does become undone. Um, you know, that little knot just helps it to stop um, unraveling completely. So, and of course I also do it when I get to the end as well. So I'll just, I'll do it again. So we're going to take the thread around the right hand side of the needle and then hold it and then take the remaining piece of thread and take it around the left hand side, effectively causing a figure eight and then a lock. So then what we'll do is we'll snip our, our thread there and then you can see there that the shape has now been joined and it's fairly invisible. So that's how you do English paper piecing stitching. It's just a very quick little whip stitch and you can, as you can see you can knock these over very very quickly. And we're all done. We are stuffed, we are stitched up at the bottom there and we have our beautiful pin cushion. Isn't that delightful? So I can pop in some of my treasured little pins here and um, yeah, we have a, a beautiful, beautiful pin cushion. So I've also finished the um, shabby type one as well. And there it is. Isn't that adorable? It's gorgeous. I love it. So it's a very, very easy little project. Um, I completed um, the hand stitching on two in a night. So yeah, pretty, pretty easy to do. And as I said, you know, the tip that I've given you um, for folding up here with the iron that makes putting it together so much simpler um, and gives you a nice neat finish
So hopefully um, you'll give these a go and hopefully I've given you a few tips on, on how to English paper piece. It's a great beginner project um, and you can get a, um, a very, very quick finish out of it. So I will be back later on in the week with another tutorial for you. See you then. Bye. Thank you.